and welcome everyone. Um, well done for joining. Uh, it's uh, it's a bit late in the day, but you know we uh, we've got a lot to get through, and hopefully, I can provide you with as much support and guidance today uh, for the uh, for the qualifications. Um, my name is Paul Webster. I'm the subject advisor for um, the uh, performing arts and, and drama qualifications that Pearson offer. Um, if you would like to say anything in the chat box, like quite a lot of you have said hello already, but if anyone would be um, okay to share um, whereabouts you are and uh, which course you'll be teaching or which you've started to teach this year, it'd be really handy to know. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is covering um, the BTEC Nationals. Uh, in performing arts. We're going to also have a look at the extended certificate in performance. We'll touch upon the performing arts practice, but the main focus is on um, performing arts and performance. So here's the agenda. Um, we are going to have a look at the uh, qualifications that are available. Um, we will focus mainly on the extended certificate sizes as well. If you've got any questions about the larger sizes, that's absolutely fine. But I just thought because of the time we've got, maybe focus on the, the key units within um, the, the, the extended certificate sizes. So we'll have a look at structures. We'll have a look at internally assessed units and how they work and externally uh, assessed units. Um, there will be the opportunity for you to ask questions throughout this session. Um, so please feel free to, as Nash said, you can put your hand up, you can write something in the chat and uh, I can invite you to come on and, uh, and speak if you like. Um, I'll also go through the type of support that I offer as a subject advisor. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's put in um, where you are at the moment. We've got a uh, we've got a national spread there. Lots of people doing the extended certificate in performance um, or in performing arts. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, we've got some dance teachers. Uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, performing arts. So. Um, welcome to you all. Uh, we will um, hopefully. Uh, be able to go through everything that you need to know, but if something isn't covered today, uh, then please do ask. So uh, to begin with, here's, here are the qualifications that are available at level three. Um, we have three columns here. We've got the BTEC National in Performing Arts in green. We've got the Extended Certificate in Performance in blue, and then we've got the Performing Arts Practice at Foundation and Extended Diplomas in dark blue. Now, all of these qualifications are fully funded for 16 to 18 year olds and 18 plus students at the moment. They all attract the same UCAS points. Um, on the table, um, you can see uh, that just the BTEC Nationals in Performing Arts are included in Key Stage 5 performance measures. So if you are running the extended certificate in performance, it's worth noting that it's that that qualification is not included in performance measures. So if you need to, if you're if you're starting to run it and you want to check, I would I would speak to your SLT about whether or not the qualification does need to be on performance measures or not. Um, in the uh, performing arts, there are five there are five sizes to the qualification, uh, running from certificate, which is the AS size, all the way through to the extended diploma, which is worth three A levels. There's just the one uh, size in the extended certificate in, in performance, which is the size of an A level, and then in performing arts practice, there's the one and a half A level foundation diploma and the extended diploma, which is three A levels. Uh, the Nationals in Performing Arts and the Extended Certificate both have external assessment, whereas Performing Arts Practice doesn't. Now, we also have a Production Arts Practice course as well. So if you do have any students who wish to study production design, technical theatre, stage management, we do have two sizes there as well. Uh, and if you want any information on Production Arts, then... Um, please feel free to, to let me know. There might not be time today. If there is, then brilliant. But if there's no time to go through it today, um, then we can arrange another meeting and talk about it. 
Now, I'm sure that you're aware that there are level three reforms taking place and that these changes were implemented by the previous government. We now have a new government uh, just over a week with them. And um, they obviously have not had the chance to be able to do or review or do anything yet because th because there are so many other things that they need to sort out. Um, so as it currently stands, all of the performing arts courses that we have available that we've just looked at are available for registrations until 2025. So in September, November 2025, you can be registering students on a one year course on a two year course. And the last certification for them will be in 2026. Now, um, it basically means that if the new government decided not to change anything at all about what the previous government had done, there would be a new set of level three performing arts and production arts qualifications that will be available for first teaching from September 26. Now, we, uh, as you can see on the timeline there, um, we haven't yet shared what those new specifications will look like because we won't find out until next July whether or not they've been approved uh, for funding. So uh, when we can, we will share the kind of draft specifications for these. But at the moment, you know, it's it's the summer recess for government, for parliament. And so they the things that they're doing are kind of like the things that they need to sort out now. And it may be it may not be until kind of September, October before we know more about what the plans are with the level three reforms. Um, but uh, in terms of how Pearson feel, we have uh, released statements on um, what we would like to happen. So, you know, we we run the the biggest selection of and, and of performing arts and production arts qualifications. And we've made it feel uh, made it clear how we feel about the reforms and that students should have access to high quali quali uh, quality uh, qualifications. So, um, yeah, we await further uh, information from from the new government about what will happen. So for the moment, we have the ones that uh, that you are aware of. And so let's go into a bit of a deep dive now with what they are and what they can do. Um, the first thing to say is that these are the this is the qualification the qualification structure for the different courses in performing arts and performance. Uh, if you've seen the specification, then you'll be very aware of this. But I just wanted to draw your attention to um, what this shows that um, there is there are endorsed pathways, first of all. So an endorsed pathway means that um, the student who takes it can focus just in that particular discipline. So we have kind of three key disciplines, which are dance and musical theatre and acting. So if a student is registered on the extended certificate in performance, it's an endorsed pathway and the same for the extended diploma in performing arts. They're also endorsed pathways. What that means is, is that when a student gets their qualification, they get their certificate, it will state on it performing arts brackets dance performance brackets musical theatre. So in terms of progression to um, further training to HE for employment, it will be very clear that the student has um, focused in the qualification in a specific discipline. Um, so the performing arts qualifications are nested, meaning that the qualifications sit within each other. So like a kind of Russian doll where you would have uh, the extended diploma as the largest size qualification set within that, the diploma, the foundation diploma, etc. So all of the units are included in the largest sizes. And one benefit of doing this is that if you are running uh, a qualification over two years, so say, for example, you were running the extended certificate in performing arts over two years, it might mean that you want to run units one and two in year one, in year 12, 
uh, which would allow any student who wanted to drop out at the end of year one to claim a certificate, the certificate in performing arts. So um, there are lots of centres who run these qualifications who do this. So they might run the extended diploma over two years, but they would have all the foundation diploma units in year one, in year 12, meaning again that the students would be able to complete the course and get a qualification um, after just one year. Um, so this is the second list. So this shows uh, all of the optional units and a couple of mandatory ones there, um, especially for um, uh, musical theatre. I don't know whether the image has just disappeared from your screen. It seems to have gone from mine. I will try to retrieve that now. Um, apologies for that. My computer's going uh, crazy today. I think it's because of the football result yesterday. So hopefully you can see that again. Hopefully that's back on your screen. Uh, please let me know if you can't see it, um, but let's assume that you can. So what we have here is the structure of the extended certificate in performing arts. Uh, this is the A-level size. There are four units. There, um, three of them are mandatory. Two of them are externally assessed. And one is an optional one that you can choose. Um, in regards to the other most popular uh, qualification, based upon um, the, the uh, details that you've provided with us today, the extended certificate in performance has got five units. Um, th units three and 34 are mandatory. And then there are the choices according to the pathway that the student is registered on. So if they are on the dance pathway, there are 10 optional units that they can choose from. Uh, if they're on acting, then there is nine. And if they're doing musical theatre, there are four optional units because musical theatre techniques is mandatory. They have to do it. Okay, so that, those are the structures. Let's now have a look at teaching and assessment. Um, there are two types of units. There are the internally assessed ones, which are then externally verified by a Pearson employed standard verifier. And then there are, there are externally assessed units, which you don't assess as a teacher and a Pearson external examiner will assess them for you. Looking first then at internally assessed units. Um, there are the key units, the key mandatory units in unit two, developing skills and techniques for live performance, or on the performance course, unit 34. Now, if you've compared these two units, they're very similar. Uh, it's just that with unit 34, there is no learning AMD, so there's no requirement for the students to submit any evidence of evaluating their work. If you are running the larger size qualifications, like the foundation diploma, the diploma or the extended diploma, there are also units four and six, which are mandatory core internally assessed units. And then there are 26 optional units from units eight to 33 for students to be able to choose. So speaking of choosing, um, which optional units do you choose to do? Um, and there are some implications here. There are some things that you and your team, if, you, if you're working with anyone else, that you're going to bring to the table here. And you're thinking, actually, th this is my area of expertise. This is what I know about um, what, you know, in terms of your background, what you feel comfortable teaching. Um, and, uh, you know, it may be something that you've studied yourself. It may, be, it may be your industry skills that come into play. It may be that you just think, actually, in order to give the students a really kind of rounded introduction to the performing arts, I feel like this is the way that they should go. Um, it may be that there are things that you'd like to teach that you could learn about through doing workshops um, and you could be in more of a facilitator role. So this is possible to do, especially when if you if you have a group of 
um, of who have mixed disciplinary interests, you may not be able to know everything. And you do have to kind of take on a kind of overview facilitating role rather than you knowing everything. Um, but it's, you know, it's absolutely fine. There are the opportunities for you to team teach as well, potentially, if um, you do have any colleagues who are also running the course and each of you focusing on your particular strengths. Um, you could also look at this in terms of from the students' perspectives and their interests and their experiences. So it may be that they're coming to you with they've got experience, they've got dance experience, they, they've been doing acting from outside classes. And what can be incredibly useful is to get this information as soon as possible and upfront from your students before you start planning, whether that's through interviews that you do, any applications about who you were teaching and what their what it, what their interests are and what they what they're going to bring to the table. Uh, you could consider the resources that you have available in terms of any recordings, any. Um, books, any opportunities for getting in professional um, theatre makers for workshops, any local performances that um, are taking place in the next few months or year that, that are in your local area that potentially could tie in with what you want to offer. Um, and then there's also things to, to consider around the performance opportunities that you can offer to students. So what are your facilities like? Um, can you provide a, a, a kind of authentic, realistic vocational experience for your students? Um, you know, is there a work in theatre? If not, do you need to think outside of the box? So do you need to think about site specific stuff, site sympathetic? There's different things that you consider hiring local spaces working with local groups and and um, being able to give your students a really varied and mixed um, approach to uh, the study so it may be that if anybody has any ideas then please feel free to put them um, into the chat about how you've decided what optional units you're going to run um and um yeah it'd be great to hear what what um how you've decided or are you still in the process of deciding and you wouldn't mind some uh, some further guidance from anybody here um now in terms of the teaching and assessing of internally assessed units that would be uh useful to go through what you need in order to to do this so there are five areas here that we're going to that we're going to look at and they're not necessarily in this order it may be that the center standardization materials moves up and down but basically this is going to be the process that you will that you will follow um now if you are running if you're doing any external units please note that you don't have to do any of these things for the uh, for the external units so these are just for internal um, units only. So let's begin first of all with the assessment plan. Now the purpose of this is um, it's it's either going to be for one year or it's going to be for two years depending on how long you're in the course but it's plotting out what um, is required and when it needs to be done by. So it covers all elements of the process from your perspective and from the internal verifiers perspective. Now you may ask at this point, I know what an assessor is, what is an internal verifier? Well, it's someone in your centre or maybe outside your centre who isn't employed by us, and but they basically administer and oversee the quality assurance processes. So basically, when it comes down to it, does the student know what they've got to do? Do they have all the information they need to do it? Are they being given a fair and comparable experience to any other student anywhere else. So do they know what the handing dates are? Do they know what they're being assessed with? It's all of these things like kind of really key fundamental elements of ensuring that the student gets a good experience. So the assessment plan is a working document and it can and it probably will change through the course. So deadlines might need to move because you just can't do it when you wanted to do it. Students are off 
things fell through, etc. Unit order might change. All of it is fine. It's a working document. And don't feel that you might write this now for the, to cover the next two years. And then you get to December and already things just aren't working in the way that you thought. Things have just happened beyond your control. You just do a, a, the next version of the assessment plan. You just do version two. It's absolutely fine. So um, this, what you can see on the screen, is a template that we have on our website. And I will give you the link uh, that you can have a look. And actually, in the resources uh, here, um, I've put in a PDF version of these slides. So as we go through, uh, there are little blue boxes that you can click that will take you directly to the, uh, the relevant section of our website. So as you can see on the screen, I just did a little example there for Unit 34, Developing Skills and Techniques. Uh, the assignment is Hip Hop, You Don't Stop. It's assessing the three learning aims for this uh, unit. The 1st of September is the internal verification assignment brief um, date. Uh, the It's given out to students on the 10th of September. The hand-in date is the 2nd of April, so it's quite a substantial assignment that they're doing here. Um, the planned resubmission is the uh, 26th of, oh sorry, they've got the internal verification of the assessment decision, so that's giving you a couple of weeks to do the, um, to do the assessment and then it's internally verified. There's a resubmission date that the students can then access um, and it's got uh, the assessor name as as Kay Lamar and the internal verif ver verifier's name as D. Rake. Some uh, little references there to um, hip hop wars. So um, one of the requirements of the BTEC course is that students are given an assignment brief. Um, the purpose of them is that they reflect the courses should reflect as much industry practice as possible in terms of what students are asked to do. Uh, are asked to do. So we ask teachers to create the briefs to provide a vocational context for the students to work within. And the students are taught skills and knowledge and understanding that they then put into practice in a scenario that you're likely to come up with. So the assignment brief is like a contract. It tells them what they have to do, what their roles and responsibilities are, how they'll be assessed, what the dates are. And it, it's a kind of, it's a different approach to GCSE and A-level if you've um, taught those. So you'll see on the screen then that the key information is here, the qualification, the unit, the learning aims, the title, and then the vocational scenario, as in the putting on a musical. And uh, you're gonna work with the director to, um, to ensure that your role as a performer is fulfilled. Um, so as well on the assignment briefs, you can write tasks and you can put the criteria in. So this is one way in which you can write tasks. It's, it's an approach that we think is very clear. And these are taken from, um, our authorized assignment briefs. Now we have authorized assignment briefs for all of the internal units, and you can use all of them as they are, if you wish. The only thing that you will notice, I think, on the previous page is the issue date, the assessor and when it's handed in, because obviously we wouldn't state that for you. You can use what we've got and you can create your own. You can adapt them. You can just ignore them. Everything is fine. Um, I'm just looking at the questions. Thank you for putting those in. Uh, Michelle has said about for a three year course, do you have recommendations to how we should structure? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, in a uh, in a moment, uh, we'll get to uh, look at some of the two year plans and then we could consider how you might um, elongate that over three. So absolutely, Michelle. And it, um, I don't uh, if you're able to say which um, which size course as well that you're doing, that would be good. Um, Jamie, um, you've chosen to teach Unit 19, Acting Skills, as you feel it's helped the students to make the links with Units 1, 2 and 3, although I've struggled with repetition with practitioners. Right, OK. And that's interesting because that brings us on to um, this question, which is about the integration 
of internally assessed units. Now, it is possible to integrate two to three units. You don't have to teach them separately and you don't have to assess them separately. So what we suggest is that you just make sure that if you're going to do this, um, that you, you're giving students the specified amount of guided learning hours so that they're not being shortchanged there so they can really develop their skills. And you can then give a lot of time to non-assessed teaching and, and activities. Um, and uh, we have examples of integrated briefs on our uh, website. And um, if you, in the PDF version, if you click that, it will take you to the authorised assignment briefs. Um, and um, yeah, they, so for instance, in this instance, in, in, in uh, reference to what Jamie's just said, it could be that you integrate units two and 19. So what the students would then be doing is they would be meeting the requirements of both units, but they could actually be using the same or the similar types of work in order to do it. So they do one performance and then meet, and that meets the requirements of units two and 19. They do one evaluation. And again, that meets the requirements of both. So it's an idea in, to, in, in light of what Jamie was saying about the repetition. It's one way to approach it slightly differently. Um, Rebecca, hello, you've said you're on your own doing BTEC and that you um, are uh, far away from another centre. Um, and is it OK for your SLT line manager to go on an IV course to uh, internally verify the units? Absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, and what you can do is um, you can you can both have a look at the um, the centre standardisation materials that we release each year so that you're both referring to them and you're both looking at them. And then that's going to kind of give you um, a sense of uh, parity. Speaking of which, uh, here are the details of those materials. Um, we have examples for key units, um, and but we although we don't have examples for every single uh, optional unit, you'll notice that each optional unit looks very similar and that you could use the standardization materials from one unit, for example, from unit six, and it's likely to provide a good example for another unit. Um, okay, so uh, something else that has to be done is internal verification. And um, this is to ensure that assignment briefs are fit for purpose, assessment decisions are fair to students. Um, so that's why we do it. And there's a number of questions that the IV can ask and that the teacher, when writing the assignment briefs, you can use these as well. They're really straightforward, you know, uh, as you can see. Are all the details accurate? Are clear deadlines given? Is there a, like an appropriate amount of time that the student's got to do this? Uh, are there tasks? that clearly meet the brief, uh, that, that, that meet the criteria. So hopefully it's relatively straightforward and not too onerous uh, in terms of what those requirements are. Uh, now, uh, standards verification is the uh, external um, review and verification of the assessment decisions that you're making. Um, lots of standards verifiers are also teachers and uh, they're running the BTEC courses uh, alongside doing this work. So if you want to be one, uh, if you want to be a standards verifier, you can apply. Um, it might be good to get a year of teaching under your belt, but if you're joining us ha having done uh, a full academic year, then maybe there's something you might be interested in. Uh, the link is on the uh, PowerPoint. Um, so standards verification takes place every year. Um, between January and May, and the SV will look at assignment briefs, internal verification, the evidence that the student has produced, uh, the feedback that you gave to them. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, really. It's it's what you'd expect. And um, the sample size is the number of students is quite is quite low. So uh, you don't have to submit them all unless there's not many in the group. Um, 
you don't need to reinvent the wheel. We've got lots of forms and guidance you can use uh, for all of the templates. And again, the link is there for you to use them. Uh, we have lots of really useful guidance documents as well. So these are on uh, everything from um, internal assessment, standards verification, internal verification, how to write assignments, lots of uh, useful guidance there. And here is a question which is uh, very similar to uh, Rebecca's, which is around that you're the only person who's doing it. And I mean, in this instance, this is actually a, a real question that came into me recently about there is no one else in the centre who is doing it. So if you are in that situation, um, we would encourage you to link up with another centre who can support you. They don't need to be local. It could be um, you're doing this, you have this relationship uh, remotely. Um, and if this is an option, then someone within your centre um, would need to internally verify the decisions. And you just, as I said before, you could kind of just share with them the centre support materials so that they feel confident with what they're doing. Okay, um, that's internal assessment. Are there any other questions that anyone would like to ask before we move on to external assessment? If so, um, please feel free to write it in. And if anyone fancies uh, speaking, um, you can raise your hand using the little uh, the little hand icon, and uh, you can come off chat, but. Doesn't look like anyone at the moment. So let's move on then to external assessment. Now, within the uh, the BTEC Nationals in Performing Arts, there are the four external units. For today, I'm just going to focus on units one and three. Uh, but if you do have any questions about units um, five and seven, please do say. Unit one. Uh, investigating practitioners work is an externally assessed task um, and there are two opportunities per year. Uh, the first window is in um, November so the forthcoming one will be part A will be released on the 28th of November and uh, that gives the details of the themes uh, that the students are going to be uh, doing their research on. And then part B is released on the 10th of January. And that involves, a, it's basically a written exam that will take place on the 10th of January. The second window of the year uh, is, it's part A is released on the 18th of March and part B is completed on the 1st of May. So if a student is registered on an ex, um, the extended certificate in performing arts, for example, that over a two year course, they would have four opportunities to complete uh, unit one. So part A is uh, when they are then they then have four weeks to do the research and create their notes. It's usually longer than that because there's usually some kind of holiday involved, but it's um, that it's it it is actually four weeks of of uh, term time that the students have. Um, part B written exam under control conditions. There are three activities, like three questions that the students are uh, responding to, and students do are able to to retake uh, unit one more than once. Um, so depending on how they do, uh, there may be an opportunity later on in the either the year or the course to do unit one again. Um, so from a uh, previous exam series, just collated this just to show you that these are some of the more popular practitioner choices for unit one. Uh, you can see there's a dazzling array, there are different types of work. Um, and what kind of uh, works in the favour of all of these that we can see on the screen is that there, there's recorded material available and there's a lot of uh, research that students can do as well into the work. So because we we provide a list um, and um, 
students have to choose two practitioners. So the list that's in the specification, they have to choose one of those. And then the second practitioner, they can choose someone either who's on the list or who isn't on the list. The list is certainly not exhaustive. And there are lots of brilliant practitioners who students could choose to look at. Um, our advice is that uh, if there's no, if there's nothing much available in terms of interviews, articles, anything about the about the particular practitioner, then it might make it quite difficult for the students to do any research. So if there's no, if there's hardly any work that they can see, if there's nothing recorded, if there's nothing they can see live, again, it's worth avoiding them in the context of this unit, this unit, not in other units, but in this particular one. Um, if they don't have an international recognition and established reputation and presence, again, worth looking at, uh, not worth looking at in the context of this unit, um, avoid film directors, avoid playwrights, avoid dancers or singers, unless they are also, as we can see on that list on the left, unless they're also someone like um, Stephen Burkoff, who is actually... Um, a performer, a writer, a director as well. Uh, so Laura, in answer to your question, yes, you can choose practitioners who are off this list for the second practitioner. Um, okay, lovely. Um, so some examples of work uh, that you could consider would be, um, uh, that have done really well in the past, Hamilton, uh, love song, metamorphosis, ghost dances, um, black, white, grey, revelations, uh, things I know to be true. Like this, there's quite a few uh, kind of go to ones that are really good. And you can um, get more details of those in our sample work and also in the lead examiner reports. A question here about how many productions that students should watch and how many times a student can retake. So um, students are expected to watch to study up to three performances for their chosen practitioners. There's no requirement for them for students to research three. There may only be two that they can do. Um, and so students can be successful in a number of ways in unit one. So. Um, some refer to one production, one practitioner, some refer to two or even possibly three. Um, some students uh, focus on one extended extract from one production. Others use several extracts from, from one or even several productions. So there's not just one set way to do it. Um, there are three opportunities to complete component one, the first attempt and then two resets. Moving on to unit three now, group performance workshop, and this is also in the extended certificate. Uh, there is one opportunity per year um, and unit three can be completed in year one or year two. It doesn't matter which. The task, the next task will be released on the 6th of January, 2025, and it will be submitted to us by the 7th of May. Students work in groups of three to seven, they have 40 hours to develop their work, to rehearse and develop it. They have five hours to complete four written milestones and the performance. So in other words, like through that 40 hour process, you can decide when they should uh, write up the, the milestones. So there are four activities which kind of chart the progress through. So one at the beginning, two in the middle, and then a final evaluative one. The performance should be between 10 to 20 minutes. Now, there are resources that you can have a look at uh, for units one and three. We've got past papers and mark schemes. Um, and this course has been running since 2016. So there's quite a few of those now that are um, that you can have a look at. The lead examiner reports are really, really detailed and thorough and contain examples of work, especially for unit one. Um, we have some great examples of sample marked learner work for units one and three. 
uh, on the website, which I'll show you the link in a moment. Um, there are lots of free education packs and links um, that professional theatre makers and performers now produce that are available on the websites that you don't need to pay for. Uh, if any of you have found any of these and you want to show the details, um, then uh, please put the details into the chat if there's anything that's a go-to for you. So it might be Zoo Nation, for example, who produce incredible packs for free. Um, there's also, uh, as a resource, is the exam timetable. It's really important that you know when these things are happening. Um, Jamie has asked, what can you do if you only have two candidates? Can they still complete Unit 3? Uh, what we say is that wherever possible, um, you use a non-assessed individual. So this could be another student. It could be someone from outside the centre. And if uh, that's the case, we can give permission. Um, and the two students who are being assessed can do all of the, they can do the majority of the work, they can sort all of this out, they're just getting someone in who's going to uh, rehearse and perform the work with them. Uh, if that's not possible to get anybody, then you just need to get in touch with us and we can, um, we can help you. So uh, I'll give you my details uh, at the end. Uh, Laura, thank you for that, really lovely. Gecko have a good devising pack on their website, great videos for free on YouTube, all those shows available on their website too. Gecko know the score. They know how important it is, you know, that they they will share their wonderful work however they can. Uh, and, it, it, and it really is quite exciting work as well. So um, thanks very much for that. That's great. Um, in terms of resources then, so that's what it looks like on the website. Um, in terms of uh, you go to course materials at the top and then on the left hand side that you select external assessment and that will uh, show you all of the external assessment details, including the question papers, the examiner reports, etc. Um, as I said, you click that, that will take you straight there. Uh, we in the in in this same section, if you scroll down and go to general support, you'll there find uh, all the sample mark learner work for the external units as well, which is lovely. Uh, in the uh, exam timetables, you can find the winter, summer and the overall year um, timetables, just in case you have never found that page before. Uh, OK, so that's it for external um, assessment. If anybody has any questions, then please uh, feel free to ask. Um, looks like everybody's OK, might be typing away, but let's see what happens as I move on to the teaching and learning materials and the resources that we have. Ah, thank you, Rebecca. Uh, that's a great question about when students find out their results. So if um, they take the if they take unit one in that first series, um, which is the the uh, it's released in November and then it's sat in um, January, then they'll find out their results in March. If they take the if they take unit three or if they take the second window from um, uh, so that's the March to May one, they find out in summer uh, what they got for. So it comes out at the same time as the results day. Uh, Jamie, for unit one, do you have to use at least one of the practitioners? Yes, you do. You have to use at least one of them. You can use both from that list, but you have to um, choose at least one. Smashing. I like I like that. Good use of the thumb, Rebecca. So uh, this what we see on the screen now, the teaching and learning materials and the resources. So we've got a delivery guide with our ideas on how to run the course. Uh, we've got editable delivery plans. Uh, there's a really good FAQ, the slides and resources from previous training courses. There's an editable scheme of work. And there's a teacher guide. Um, oh, uh, 
Laura has asked, if it's a two-year course, do they get the results at the end of year 12 or do you submit all at the end of year 11, at year 13? So if you were running the extended, let's say it was the extended certificate in performance over two years, which has one external unit and four internal units, if they did unit three in year 12, they would find out in the summer what they got for that unit. If you were, if you delivered unit 34 in year 12 and it was standards verified during that year, they and you would know what they got for unit 34. So when units are taught, when internally assessed units are taught and standards verified, you then know, oh, okay, so... Student A, she has got a, a, a merit in Unit 34 and has come out with a distinction in Unit 3. So that's where they're up to. Uh, there's no kind of, that's as formal as it gets. There's nothing that we release. You're just keeping track of how the students are doing with the units that they've done. Hope that makes sense. Uh, on the screen, you can see a two-year scheme of work for the Extended Certificate in Performing Arts. This is a really straightforward way of doing it, where you are doing um, units one and two um, side by side, potentially covering the same practitioners and looking at similar work. Um, and in this, um, they've gone through to do the external assessment of unit one in the in March to May. And they've also done the assessment of unit two in uh, in the summer term, in the first part of the summer term. So they've done a lot of teaching and then the assessment happens on later in the year. And then in this plan, again, in year two, uh, term one is all about teaching and preparation leading up to because they're doing group performance workshop and, and acting styles and then they are doing um, the window from January to May for group performance workshop and they're doing the acting styles in the uh, summer term uh, which would they'd have to make sure that they uh, had done it with enough time for the standards verified to be able to to look at the work but using this model uh, it's what I was referring to before. By doing units one and two in year 12, it means that they can, for those students who don't want to carry on, they could transfer them onto the certificate course, claim certification in summer, and then those that want to carry on can do these qualification, uh, these uh, the other two units as well to get the final qualification. Um, in this example, uh, this is for the extended certificate in, in performance in dance. And in year one, in year uh, in the first year, there are there are three units being covered. Units 34, 10 and 14. There is the opportunity there um, to do an integrated assignment with unit 34 and unit 10 or unit 10 and unit 14. So it, you know, and also uh, some of these um, could be pushed back as well so that Unit 34 doesn't have assessment in uh, the first term and then Units 34 and 10 are done together in the second term. So some choices there. Uh, and then in the second year, Group Performance Workshop and Tap Dance uh, Technique as the final uh, assessment again they might have to bring that one forward a little bit because the deadline for standardization for standards verification is in may so um one thing to consider is that if you're running the course over two years you don't have to be standards verified in the first year it could be that your assessments are taking place in the summer term and that you just explain that to your sv and then the work would be looked at the following year but that's uh, that's useful. Uh, OK, and then is it possible to run this course with just a single student? Um, so for assessment in either Unit 2 or Unit 34, a student must perform with at least another person. 
So they could do most of the course, uh, they could do most of unit two or 34 on their own. But when it comes to assessment, they need to be with someone else. So it could be another student. It could be another teacher. Depending on which optional unit has been selected, a student might be OK to do solo work. But they might need to perform with another unit. So you just need to look at which units that you're going to be teaching to see. Uh, what the expectations are because the units are pretty clear in that respect and then unit three as I said before there is that requirement that they need to work with and at least one other so um, again you know it might be that you use students from year 13 as a possible way of doing that um, how we communicate well we um, I am I send out monthly newsletters i sent one out today and if you're signed up then you should have released it uh, you should have uh, uh, received it um so as well as sending out the newsletters there's also updates on the subject page on the qualification uh, website so you can see all of that news there um so um yeah some hopefully some useful things so in the newsletter that i sent out today there is information on this that we did uh, a week or so ago. Um, doesn't time fly? It's already the 15th. Wow, that was two weeks ago. So um, had uh, the pleasure of working with two incredible people from beyond the canon um, who uh, provide guidance and support to teachers and young people in terms of working with global majority artists, of um, empowerment, of artist activism. There's loads of stuff that they uh, focus and do. So uh, there is a recording of it. Uh, it's just over an hour long. There's lots of great ideas there. So if you are interested, you could have a look at that. OK, uh, are there any questions? Uh, it's 25 past five. Uh, is there anything else that anyone would like to talk about? Are there resources uh, that you would recommend? Um, anything else that you need to know? Uh, please say. Whilst you're having a think, I will show you my contact details. Um, you can email me teaching performing arts at pearson.com uh, you can book an appointment with me so these are 15 minute one-to-one -one appointments through teams and we can chat about anything you like well obviously within reason uh, i'm happy to talk about other things that aren't teaching related uh, just let me know uh, so i can prepare uh, there's the subject advisor updates uh, and you can sign up as well if you aren't receiving them um, and we also have a communities page as well. We have a Facebook page, which you may be aware of, the BTEC Performing Arts Sharing Best Practice page. And that's got lots of useful hints and tips and guidance on there as well. Um, so, Laura, you have asked about um, where you can find the documents. Uh, so we went through that. If I just go back here. Um, we will find the, just whizzing back. So these are the forms. This is the paperwork that we were talking about. So it's on um, page 22. It's not, if it, 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 it doesn't have to be paperwork heavy. It can be if, if you decide to make it paperwork heavy, uh, uh, if you, you can do the same with, anything really i suppose you, it doesn't have to be it can be relatively straightforward if you use our assignment briefs they're done if you use our iv forms play it's all there you know it's it depends on how many students you have and it depends on how many assessments you've got to do but if you decide to integrate assignments for example you get in you, you have to do half the paperwork so uh there are pros and cons to uh various approaches but hopefully that's clarified with that where you can find those um smashing uh brian will there be a specific unit three training course um 
Now, because of the rules, because of the off-call rules around external assessment, we can do retrospective kind of feedback and guidance, but we can't run after the first assessment has taken place. We can't then run specific training events for external units. I know it's it's um, slightly strange, but this is the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, so what we have to do is rely upon the lead examiner reports, rely upon the samples of uh, marked work and um, get in touch with me uh, because unfortunately we, we can't run uh, the events. Uh, Jamie has asked uh, about catching up and working with each other. Fantastic. If anybody wants to, please do. You can, if you want to put your, um, if you want to put your, um, what are they called? Email addresses into the chat. Um, the This will be recorded, but you won't be able to see the chat. So if anyone wants to do that now, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you can also go onto the Facebook page and you can put your details on there if anybody doesn't want to share. Um, Brian, there is no showstopper award this year, unfortunately. I really hope that next year there will be. Um, we will see what happens. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that. Um, oh, lovely. Everybody looks like they're sharing their details. Fantastic. Well done, everyone. Um, ah, yeah, well, Brian, as soon as we know, I will let you know. No worries, uh, because it's a wonderful thing and uh, it would be great if we were able to get back to doing them as well. Um, OK, so I think we have reached the end. It's 29 minutes past. Look at this for time and it's extraordinary. It's like I've done this before. Uh, thank you to all of you for joining. I hope that it's been useful. Um, it's been a pleasure as always. Please do feel free to get in touch if you need anything. Um, but for now, let's leave it there. Enjoy your summer break. Uh, have a wonderful time. Rest, relax, come back refreshed uh, in a few weeks. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining.